I don't know what it is, but this team looks different, bro. What the heck? Honestly, it just feels like it's missing something. Like, what the heck happened to this Cubs team? Oh, no. Wait a minute. The Rickies decided to get rid of every single one of their good players, pretty much. The whole dumb intro aside, the Cubs still got some good players, but I still cannot believe that the Cubs really didn't keep at least one piece, at least Chris Bryant or Javi or somebody. I am very, very surprised they didn't do that because I really do see both sides. I see why Baez would be traded. I even see why Chris Bryant would be traded. There's a but to this though. If you're the Cubs, a super historic franchise and one of the biggest markets in the MLB, how the heck do you not keep at least one of those homegrown guys? Like they got Contreras. I'm sure they're going to build around him. They still got Hendricks for a little bit, but I cannot believe they didn't keep at least Chris Bryant. It really does blow my my mind. I was expecting them to at least sign at least one extension with one player, but I guess not. And Cubs fans, I am so sorry. I mean, they really did just get rid of this entire team in a day. Now, the Cubs did get some good prospects. They got Armstrong. They got Nick Madrigal, by the way. This dude's going to be great for us. But still, I would assume you got to keep at least one of those guys. But I don't know. We really don't know the full story. Either way, after that long intro, welcome to the Cubs rebuild. A couple days after they had that gigantic fire sale and just ruined their entire team. At least for 2021, they're going to be fine, but still. But if we look at the current roster, it is seriously messing me up here. We still got Contreras, Kyle Hendricks, Nico Horn. Nick Modrigal, Dan Winkler, Adbert, Ian Happ, Rex Brothers. Rex freaking brothers, what the heck? This guy's gotta be ancient. I remember this dude from like 2011. When the heck did you start playing, my dude? 2011, there we go. Oh my God. I haven't heard Rex brothers' name in literally years. Okay, I didn't know he was on the Cubs. Either way, after that, we got Rowan Wick, we got Robinson Chirinos, Cody Hewer, big old Patrick Wisdom over there at first base, David Bodie, Zach Davies, Matt Duffy, Jonathan Holder. The rest just kinda makes me sad if I'm being honest, but yeah. That's the current Cubs team. Like when absolutely everything is all settled, I really hope that the Cubs go back and realize how good of a team they actually had. Like the run they really had from like 2016 to now there has been some bumps but you don't get that often if ever where you have at least three homegrown studs for your team like those guys were the absolute lifeblood of this entire team and just because they were free agents at the end of the year they could not get them back honestly it's a super sad thing but i'm here to help we're gonna be taking this cubs team turning it around and hopefully winning a world series by the end of this video if you guys are excited for it and you want to see this on the nationals as well then be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe down below that's gonna be the best way to tell me also we're getting closer and closer to 60,000 subscribers if you guys have not hit that red button then seriously go ahead and do that right now. And like I said earlier, let's go and fix this team. Holy crap. All right, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is actually sim to draft day because holy crap, look at that record. But I'm going to be simming to draft day as Jared Walsh goes to the race for Brandon Lau and Austin Meadows. Okay, well, raise. All right. But we're going to be going to the draft day and hopefully getting a stud out of the draft. I think that's going to help us tremendously, especially if we try to go for a stud in the MLB or if the guy just turns out to be a complete beast. Whether we trade him or keep him, I'm looking for a beast that could do both. And from what I'm seeing here, we are not going to get that. Oh my God. This actually backfired pretty hard because most of the guys here, I really don't have a good read on them. And the ones that I do actually have a good read on aren't going to be ready until like 2025 plus. And just letting you guys know right now, I don't plan on being with the Cubs until 2025. I plan on like 2024 latest for a World Series. So that right there is not going to work. I think I might have to go with somebody else. But then the other problem is most of these guys aren't scouted all the way. So I really have no clue who I'm going with and I'm going to have a shot in the dark for all these dudes. But hey, screw it. That's the gamble. That's the game. And this dude, Ross Levy, besides being 5'8", looks like a complete beast. But the guy's stats are killer. If I'm not being lied to right now, this guy's a stud. I do like the fact that he plays second, left, and right field, not to mention center field. That's actually very, very big for us. Also, Salvador Tejada, another catcher. Bats left and looks like a fantastic hitting catcher. I don't know. I got way more accuracy on him. I feel like I might have to go with him first because like the only other guys like Roberto. He's a 55 overall right now. It's going to be a long road for this guy to get to the MLB. And there's really nobody else here that I want. So you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going Salvador first. And I'm just going to hope that my dude Lovey's still there. And if he is in the second round, that's going to be a complete gift. Let's see. Oh my God, he is. Let's go, baby. All right, that's it. There's nobody else. Legit nobody's going to be left. Let's just go ahead and see what we got here. Let's hope that both Ross and Salvador could be an A or B. It'll be absolutely massive if they are. Come on, baby. And he's a B. All right, Salvador's a B. That's not too bad. What about Ross? He is an 84. All right, we'll take that, boys. They got a good chance of being insanely good. So now we got just a little bit more depth in that prospect pool. I love to see that. Let's go ahead and keep this thing rocking and let's just continue to suck, to be honest, because we are not doing good as John Means goes to the Red Sox. For Devers, by the way, did you guys see that? Legit Devers for John Means. This game's tripping beyond belief, bro. Either way, here we are, trade line time right now. And right now we got Kyle Hendricks on the IL. We got Nico and Nick Madrigal doing okay. Got Ian Happ, of course, doing good. Got Dan Winkler doing good but i'm thinking we go ahead and trade some of the other pieces like matt duffy maybe like austin romine or trevor or some of these guys just for worse people because i want to get a good spot in the draft next year i really do so i think it would be a good idea so zach davies and trevor go ahead and get rid of them for some random prospects here it really won't matter who except for maybe nate pearson hello all right hold on a minute i forgot it's on for the show i can do some crazy things so the first thing i'm doing i'm gonna try to get alec manoa because this dude is beyond ridiculous please let me get the guy oh my god let's go baby 
Got him. Beautiful. This dude right here is the future, 100%. After that, we got Jose and Ian Miller going for Colton Kowser, the Orioles' first round pick in this year's draft. Again, this game is absolutely ridiculous. Now we got Kevin Alcantara. We got Pete Crow Armstrong, Colton Kowser, and now Brennan Davis. This outfield, if it actually comes together, is going to be disgusting. Not to mention, if I really wanted to, I could trade a lot of these guys for some insanely good pieces. So, so far, this rebuild's going very, very well. All right, after all those trades, we're good. Let's go ahead and continue to suck. And please give me a good spot in that draft. Come on, baby. It's exactly what we need. So, come on. Keep losing, boys. And this year to end the season, we finish off 74 and 88 in 2021. Now, we're not going to have the best spot in the draft, but at least we're going to have like top 15. It's going to be a very, very good spot to be in, so I'm down. But besides all that, Nico Horner, I mean, not terrible, but still not great. The guy got his attributes increased like crazy, though, this year, so I'm fine with that. He had 36 doubles as a leadoff guy. I'll definitely take it, Nico. After that, Rafael Ortega. This dude's super popular right now. And the game didn't do horrible, but the average, not great. After that, Nick Magical, 266, seven bombs. Honestly, could have been better for him, but four triples, not terrible. Patrick Wisdom, actually pretty solid. Ian Happ, not bad. Contreras, not bad either for the catcher. And then besides that, that is pretty much it. Okay. And the rotation, Hendricks did good. Alec did great. Adbert, not good. Okay. Alec Mills, again, not great. And then Braylon, okay. I'll take that from Braylon. I like how we did. Also, the White Sox beat the Giants in 2021. Good for Kimbrel getting another ring. Also, another guy that the Cubs traded away at the deadline. It's just Spain out here for all these Cubs fans. I'm so sorry. Either way, off season, we got like a hundred and something million dollars to spend. We're going to sign back Winkler and that is pretty much it. The rest of these guys are just going to walk. And now it's time to build back this team quite a bit by adding a lot of good pieces. Let's go ahead and get this thing together. The first thing I want to try to do is get Marcus Stroman because this dude went crazy in 2021. A 3.19 out of 177 innings. I like that quite a bit for Marcus, so let me get him. The next thing that I actually want to do is go out and get Chris Taylor. CT3 on the Cubs would actually be magical because we do have a stacked up infield already, but Chris Taylor in the outfield or maybe platooning a little bit for the team would be beautiful. The guy would just be like another right-handed Ben Zobers for the team. So Chris Taylor, please get over here. And after that, we're going to get Miguel Rojas because I want to put this guy over there at third base. And then from there, I think we're okay. Going into year two, we got Marcus Stroman, Chris Taylor, and Miguel Rojas. Those are very, very big upgrades for this team. Let's just hope that it works. Let's hope that we get all these guys. Here we go, baby. Come on. Give me that good luck. Oh, God. Rodon going to the Red Sox, of course. Roberto Perez going to the Braves. Christian Vasquez also going to the Braves. Marte to the Mets. That's not good. Store to the Phillies. That's also not good. Buster Posey to the Angels. That looks wrong. Did we get everybody that we wanted, though? Okay, not yet. We still got Stroman and Rojas out there. Come on, guys. Just come on home. Please, Stroman. You're the last one. Come on, baby. Just get over here as the race. Get Chris Bryant. Hey, okay. I mean, that's what I wanted in real life to happen, but I'm down if it happens in the offseason. Let's go. And Marcus Stroman is no longer interested. Oh, God, please don't sign. Please don't sign. Whatever you do, I will up that offer. Come on, Stro. What are you doing? I'll give you two. 23.5. Get your dumb little self over here, dude. Please tell me we got him. And we did. Thank goodness. All right. Let's go ahead and keep this thing going. And the Mariners get Boba shed. I cannot believe these trades right now. And literally, as I'm saying, that Wander Franco goes to the Brewers. Why? He had a great season. Not to mention he's, well, 20 at this point. But what? I mean, Devin Williams and Garrett Mitchell, that's not bad, but Wander Franco legit could be a stud stud. Not just a stud, like a stud stud. Razor stupid, what could I say? Either way, next year for the 2022 draft, we're going to have pick number 10, which is actually incredibly good for us. I'll take that. And that's honestly a great spot to be at. So I don't mind that. Either way, we're back here in 2022. But take a little look at the new team. We got a couple things to fix here real quick. First up, we got to put Miguel Rojas over there at third base. Let me go ahead and do that. He actually goes up to an 80, so that's not bad. And then from there, we got Chris Taylor right there. Beautiful. And then with that, I think we're chilling. We got everybody here. Got the new guy, Marcus Stroman. We also got Aaron Sanchez. Got Matt Wessler from the Rule 5 draft. Yeah, we're chilling, boys. All right, let's go. Coming in this here at 18th. It's a little bit better than 25th, so I'll take it. And we're just going to go ahead and go up until the first year player draft, and I'll see you guys there. All right, so here we are. June 1st, 2022. We got the draft coming up here. Again, number 10 in the draft. I'm hoping for a very, very good pick here. If I'm looking at everybody, again, we kind of got screwed a little bit. But George right here for the outfield looks absolutely fantastic. He looks like a dude that could actually carry us for a long, long time. Got pretty decent fielding. Very, very good hitting. And his speed projects to be elite, so I'm down for that. Let's go and get George. And besides Besides that, that is pretty much it because again, we got screwed. In the second year of the draft, Omba the Show has to fix it. There's barely any draft picks compared to the year before. And that honestly is just not realistic because every single year it's stacked up pretty much. So hopefully next year they fix it. But besides that right now, we are sucking, completely sucking. The MLB is ranking us at 14th, but we are playing like a legit minor league team. Alec Manoa not doing good even though he's an 88 overall somehow. Marcus Stroman not really doing all that great even though he's an 87. My guy Wilson Contreras is just sucking completely. Nico Horner not good, Sergio not good, Ian Happ terrible. Chris Taylor, at least somewhat decent. Everything is just going terribly, terribly wrong. But at least we're only in June. There's still a lot of time to turn it around as we lose 1 to 15 to the freaking Mets. That's absolute torture right there. Like I said, we still got a lot of work to do, but wow, I was expecting to do just a little bit better this year because of the guys that we got. But I guess not. Looks like we got to add more. So let's go ahead and do that 44 and 55. Not great. Let's go ahead and get some studs here real quick. But look at the trade block. We got Brian Reynolds on the trade block because all the other teams are dumb. If the Pirates were to actually do this, they're one of the dumbest teams ever. So give me my guy Reynolds for Sergio, Donnie, and Owen. I mean, come on. 
it's ridiculously easy at that point. Like, what are we doing? Now we can put Chris Taylor over there in right field because God knows Jason Hayward in this game needs some serious help. So let's go ahead and move Chris Taylor over to right field. And there we go, baby. The guy's in 87 right now. And look how good he's doing. But seriously, Reynolds on this team looks disgusting. Either way, after that, we're going to go ahead and do one more thing. I want to get a good lefty on this team and I feel like I can do it. And the lefty that I'm going to try my best to go for is going to be Framber Valdez. I'm going to try my best to get him over here real quick. Okay, Corey Abbott's not going to be it. Anderson, maybe? No, all right. What about Ryan Jensen? There we go. All right, that's a little bit better. This dude, Framber, right here is ridiculous. He's going to fit in just fine on this team. And despite the record, we really are strengthening this team quite a bit. I like the little trajectory that we're on right now. It's not bad. As we can see from the trade talks, we're doing just a little bit better. Also, Contreras real quick needs a contract. This dude sucks. All right, right now he's sucking. So since he wants a contract, maybe I can get him for a little bit cheaper, possibly. Let's see how this goes real quick. If he signs this, I'll be amazed. Like there's pretty much no shot with the club option here. And there we go. Yeah. All right. Let's go in up about like 4 million and then hit him with both. No. Okay. What about player? Come on. There we go. All right. Hey, yo, call me crazy, but I'm about to do something real quick. I'm going to go over to the training thing real quick. And instead of having Nick Madrigal run base running drills, I'm going to go ahead and put this guy in the gym because this guy desperately needs those power numbers to go up. The exact same with Nico over here. I need both these guys in the gym, actually getting some weights going. We got to get that ball elevated and out of the stupid stadium. All right. Either way, we made a lot of good upgrades this year. Let's go ahead and see how we do by the end of the season. And then after that, let's go ahead and get to the off season. This year for the Cubs, we finish off 80 and 80 too. Just a little bit better, but we're still not good. We do have an award though. What the heck do we get? Nico Horner for the gold glove. And then Brian Reynolds actually for the silver slugger. Let's go. Look at Brian Reynolds right here. Holy crap. 332 with 33 home runs and 108 RBIs. Again, the pirates are stupid. Say it with me now. The guy had 45 doubles too. This guy's a godsend, bro. He's a legit a godsend. I hope the pirates eventually will learn not to trade their best pieces away for pretty much legit nobody. My God. Either way, Nick Madrigal made some decent progress in the weight room. Got plus four and plus three. At six bombs bombs this year. Look at this guy. And after that, Nico Horner got plus five to each. Okay. For just making that little progress each time. Either way, I like where the boys are at. Let's go and keep this thing going though and just add a couple more pieces around them. If we can actually do that, we'll be in a great spot for next year. Like I'm talking contention type level. Let's see if we can actually go out and do that thing. Okay. Patrick Wisdom, he's been all right at first base, but when I can get Trey Mancini, I'm getting Trey Mancini. After that, Jameson Tyne really doesn't want all that much money. So if I can get him, I might as well do it. And then also Kenley. I know a lot of people have given up on him, but I'm just going to go ahead and get him and hope that he can do good for me. After all that we got James and Ty on. We got Trey Mancini, Kenley Jansen, and Richard. Again, let's hope that we can get everybody, and if we can, we'll be in a great, great spot as the Yankees get Trey Turner. That's not a great spot. Let's just hope that we can get everybody. They also got Tim Anderson. What the heck, Yankees, relax, please. Oh, and come on. Every single time after arbitration comes out, I always go out and check to see if anybody got left behind. And I see Jonathan Hernandez here got left behind. Jonathan Hernandez in this game is ridiculous for the bullpen. I've gotten him so many times and he's done good every single time. So real quick, knock on wood, and let's hope that he can do good for me if I can actually get him. Come on, boys, as Trey Mancini goes for $3 million less to the Astros. All right, Trey, I see where I stand, bro. I mean, after that, Jake Cronenworth, we could get Rizzo back. I mean, that's not terrible. He's kind of getting screwed over in New York. Look at that. Oh my God. Yeah, Rizzo, get back over here, bro. Let's go ahead and take care of you real quick. Let's hope that we can get Rizzo back here. That'd actually be funny. And Rizzo doesn't want to come back. That is cap 100%. I would assume if you just asked him like, hey, you want to go back to the Cubs? He'd probably say yeah, but whatever. It don't matter. Jake Cronenworth, he's coming over here now. Let's hope that this guy can do good. If he doesn't, I'll just trade him away for somebody else. But besides that, we're ready to go. We got everybody else that I wanted. And let's hope that we can do good with this new Cubs team. This year coming in the Cubs are seventh overall. That's a lot better. I feel like 2023 will finally be the time where the Cubs get back over 500. Let's hope for it, but I'll see you guys in July. 569 seconds later. Oh, baby. I'm stealing this thing from the Yankees. I don't care, but start spreading the news, baby. The Cubs are back. This year coming to the trade line, we are 60 and 38, dude. To anybody that's trusting the process, I appreciate you guys trusting me because we are now back at the top of the NL Central. Now, that does not mean that we're going to win it. We still got some more things to do, but it does put us in a pretty good spot. The first thing I feel like I got to do is actually get rid of Rojas. The reason why he's 34 years old is in the last year of his contract, and he's also not doing the absolute greatest over at third base. I feel like I could put a little bit of a prospect thing together and get somebody incredible. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. Oh, and come on, please let this happen. Please let me get JRM over here. Oh my God, there we go. Jose Ramirez for Miguel and Colton Kowser. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you, twins. Now we have one of the best third basemen in the entire game. Apparently in this game, the second overall actually, which is kind of nuts, but we got a double machine over there. So again, thank you, twins. And let's go and keep this thing going, baby. I'll see you guys at the end of the year and hopefully we'll be back in the division spot. Let's go and get to it. I'm super excited. Let's go. And this year we finish off 97 and 65 taking on the Braves and the NLDS. What type of awards do we end up winning this year? Delivery man of the year going to Matt Whistler. There we go. 
A rule five pick, by the way. Matt Whistler, baby, beating out Matt Barnes, too. This dude's getting paid 14.5 million, not to mention it's going up every single year. Matt Whistler, though, got 3.1 million this year. And like I said earlier, was a rule five pick in 2022 or 2021, I guess. That's absolutely crazy for us. After that, we got Nick Madrigal doing pretty good. Got Nico Horner. There we go. The bombs are finally coming in. Brian Reynolds, look at that. J Ram, not terrible. A lot better than Miguel. Chris Taylor, let's go, baby. Patrick Wisdom, not bad. Ian Happ, the average, got to go up a little bit, but still. And Wilson Contreras, again, same thing for him. The average got to go up, but I like it. I like how we're doing, baby. After all that, Alec Manoa, not terrible, but still, I would like to see a little bit more. For Amber, that's what I'm talking about. Kyle, let's go. Adbert, okay, let's go ahead and put Ty on in there. And then Marcus Stroman, a 4.3. Let's hope that he's better in the postseason. Either way, going against the Braves now. This is about to be intense. Alec Manoa, game one versus Mike Soroka. This is about to be big. And we lost that one by eight. Okay, Manoa, not great. Bramber versus Ian Anderson. Lost that one by three. Okay, Cal Hendricks. Come on, baby. There we are. Marcus Stroman versus Huskar. Won that one as well. And then Jameson Tyon versus Mike Soroka. Jameson, if you're going to do anything big, it's got to be right here, baby. Come on. And lost it by five. All right. That's incredibly rough. But both these guys did not do as I thought. Alec has done very good for me. And also Framber's done very, very good for me. I'm very disappointed in both these dudes. Either way, let's go and keep going. The Dodgers won this year. And this year, I'm really hoping for one thing. Let's hope that's going to be here. And it is. Let's go, baby. Jacob freaking DeGrom. I'm getting this dude for two years. I'm hoping that he'll come over here. If he doesn't, I'll get glass down or Jack Flaherty. But we got to get one more ace. From what I saw in that postseason, we have to get at least one more guy. So I'm ready to go with this. Please let it be DeGrom, though. No. All right. This is what we're going for. We're going all out. Jacob DeGrom. Liam Hendricks, Matt Whistler, and Kyle Hendricks. Let's get the boys back, especially DeGrom. Come on, DeGrom. There we go, baby. That's what I'm talking about right there, boys. We also got Hendricks. That is beautiful. We are sadly going to lose out on Matt Whistler, but that's going to be all right. I think we're going to go ahead and get Scherzer for the bullpen. Just have the guy eat some innings, and we should be okay. After that, we are all good, and let's go ahead and run this thing back in 2024. And here we go, boys. Look at that. Jacob DeGrom in his Cubs uniform. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It looks very, very weird. But this year, we are coming in fifth overall, and let's hopefully run the central. Really, the only upgrades I made this year is to the rotation in the bullpen. Let's hope it pays off. Let's see how this team can do. And if I have to make any other trades, I'll go ahead and do that in July. Let's go ahead and get there and hope that the team can do good. The 2024 trade deadline, we come in 65 and 35 and also four and a half games above the Cardinals. That's very, very important, but I feel like we are missing one thing. If I take a look at Patrick, the home runs are good, but I just feel like we want to get something better. Like if I can really go out and get one of the best first basemen, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Not to mention in this lineup right now, we have a boatload of righties. So if I can find a lefty stud like a Nate Lowe or a Jared Walsh, I'm going to do that. Let's see what the heck I can find real quick. First up, Jared Walsh. Oh, okay. And that was easy. All right, we're good. That was actually way too quick. I wasn't expecting Jared Walsh, but I'll take it. Everybody else is doing good. I don't feel like we need to change anything. Let's just go ahead and run this thing straight to the postseason. Let's get there. Oh, and I'm glad we made that trade. Look at that. 107 and 55. Won our division. We're taking on the winners of the wild card game. It's either going to be the Dodgers or the Cardinals. Please let it be the Cardinals. Holy crap. The Cardinals did great, but the Dodgers are the first ranked team in pretty much every single aspect. So I hope we don't face the Dodgers, basically. Either way, Cy Young going to Jacob DeGrom. Also, the MVP going to Jacob DeGrom. That right there is why we get the guy. But yeah, this team was ridiculous. Look at that. J-Ram. Horner took a little bit of a step back, but it's fine. Brian Reynolds, still great. Jared Walsh, oh my god. Everybody was phenomenal this year. I like to see it. Let's go ahead real quick and see what that we're facing. It's going to be the Dodgers. Of course it is. All right, DeGrom versus Dustin May. Lost that one by two. Manoa versus Trevor Bauer. Won that one, thank goodness. Adbert versus Julio Urias. Oh, God. Won that one 14 to 5. There we go. And then Framber versus Walker Bueller. Oh, my God, boys. Let's go. Let's keep it going. The Phillies now. DeGrom versus Zach Wheeler. Won that one. Beautiful. Alec Manoa versus Casey Mize. Won that one as well. Adbert versus Aaron Nola. Lost that one. God dang it. Braylon versus Ranger. There we are, baby. And then Jacob DeGrom versus Casey Mize. Come on. There we go. Let's keep this thing running. Versus the White Sox. Chicago versus Chicago. I felt like this was going to happen in my head, but I just didn't say it. I should have. But now I think for the first time in history, I could be mistaken, but we have the Cubs versus the White Sox. That's crazy. All right, number one, Alec Manoa. Let's go, baby. Lost that one by one. Are you kidding me? Next up, DeGrom versus Dylan Cease. Lost that one too. Oh, God. Adbert versus Tanner. Okay, guys. Framber versus Ronaldo. Oh, my God. We actually got freaking slapped by the White Sox in some close games, but some other ones, it was just terrible. First off, who won the MVP? Jared Walsh, thank you. But guys, what the heck happened here? Jared Walsh, a beast. Chris Taylor, terrible. Ian Hab, okay. Six from runs, I will say that wasn't bad. J Ram, oh my God. And then David, Jesus, boys. Okay, that was just terrible all around. All right, well, GG. White Sox, congratulations, you guys did it. But we did rebuild this team. I got them back to the World Series by 2024. Not to mention we did it without breaking the bank. We still had $108 million 
million dollars to spend if I really wanted to, which is actually nuts if you think about it. Either way, if you guys wanted to see it, there we go. This is the GM rating. Went 74 and 88 in 2021, went 80 and 82 in 2022, went 97 and 65 in 2023, and then this year it went 107 and 55. It just sucks we lost the World Series. That's so terrible. Either way, Cubs fans, I hope you're happy with it. If you guys enjoyed the rebuild, leave a like on it. Let's go for 1500. I believe in you guys. And then also hit that sub button down below. We're going for 60K. Let's hope that we can hit that by the end of the month. Either way, I appreciate all you guys. I'll see you guys soon and peace out.